people back in the kitchen are cooking up some really healthy, wonderful, delicious treats for both you and your animal companions. So speaking of food, what do you feed or serve your animal companions? Canned or dry food or maybe something else? Whatever it is that you're giving them, do you know exactly what the ingredients are? Please share in the comments. I'd love to hear, like just write canned or dry or something else all together. So th have you ever thought about what those ingredients are? Well, ponder that. And we're gonna go into, uh, today we're gonna talk about some things that you never want to feed your animal companion, or at least you want to know what they are. And also we're going to be talking about good things, healthy things, the good stuff to keep our animals and ourselves extra healthy. But first, if you're new, because we have a lot of new people at the Animal Lovers Cafe, please write new in the comments wherever they are on whatever device that you're viewing on. Because not only myself, but all the other members of the Animal Lovers Cafe would love to say hi to you, to greet you, and to welcome you. And if you don't know me, my name is Janet Dobbs of Animal Paradise Communication and Healing and the owner of the Animal Lovers Cafe. My greatest joy and pleasure is to help you discover your unique way of receiving communication with animals. So, have you ever wondered what's in that bag of dry food or canned food that you feed your animal companions? Well, the purpose of today is I want you to feel really super confident about what you're buying and what you're serving. So I'd really, 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 really love for you to just add, put anything in the comments if you'd like to um, ask a question or learn anything, um, share anything about your own personal experiences before we get um, going. But Today is going to be kind of fun because I'm going to have a lot of props. There might be some on-screen things, but there's going to be a lot of props. So I might be doing that. Don't worry. I'm just get, getting something that I, I want to show you. And I felt like the physical, um, well, I'm just going to show you. Physical prop is much more interesting sometimes than just something stagnant on a screen. What do you think? Um, so we're here talking about ingredients in your animal's food, and that's usually canned or um, bagged, you know, canned or in a bag, dry. <laughs> that's what it's called, dry, dry food, canned food. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about some other kinds of uh, diets and foods that you can feed your animal companions. Um, okay, so as I mentioned, so I'm just props, right? So of course, you go into the grocery store, the pet food store, the health food store, and there's rows and aisles of, I'm not promoting a, um, a brand, but this is just a bag of dry food, dogs or cats, right? We're gonna talk about that. And there's various sizes and brands of cat food, dog food, there's rows and rows and rows of them. How do you know what's healthy? How do you know what's good? Do you take your veterinarian's advice? Hi to whoever's joining us. We're just getting going here in case you just came in. Uh, and we're gonna be talking about the ingredients, some of the um, ingredients you really wanna watch for in your animal's um, food. So welcome you if you're just now coming in and you missed the fun song, Dancing Like Your Animal. Um, so you might be wondering, maybe not, but you might be wondering, what the heck am I doing, animal communicator, animal Reiki practitioner, teacher, animal meditation teacher, talking about ingredients in animal food, in pet food? Um, well... In 1994, 
our kitty Cleo passed away. She had cancer. She lived to be 18. First kitty that I'd ever lived with. I was always a dog person until I met my husband and he came with Cleo. And Cleo won me over um, to the world of kitties. And when she passed, she was 18 years old, and um, we discovered she had cancer just before she passed. Um, we were devastated. And Cleo started me on a journey to learn about animal health and nutrition. And so back in the mid-90s is when I started my journey, and I really started learning about what's, what's in your pet food. What are those ingredients? What the heck are they? So that's where I got started and many, many years of studying with all kinds of amazing uh, veterinarians and people that, um, you know, really know what the ingredients are and then the what to do. What should we be doing? So that's what I want to share with you guys um, right now. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments while I share with you, um, and I'm going to get to the ingredients. So there are really, really, really healthy foods out there, prepared foods, and foods that you can make yourself. That's the healthiest, of course. But when it's a bag or a can, there's this list of ingredients, right? I'm going to see if we can, I don't think you can see, but right over here are the ingredients. See how little that is? I mean, you can't even see it. You need a magnifying glass to see what it is. So just one tip for you right now. The first ingredient on any label, whether it's human food or animal food, if you don't know this, but you may already know, that is what is in the package or the can or the whatever that the most and then the last ingredients has the least of so just so you know as you start reading the ingredients and the first ingredient in temptations cat treats right doesn't that look great it looks so inviting really really fun the first ingredient is chicken byproduct meal what's that do you know i didn't know but now i do and I'm going to share that with you. Put this crinkly thing away. Sorry for the noise near the microphone. I'm going to share that with you um, right now. So are you ready? What's in your pet's food? I'm about to tell you. And we're going to get going with ingredients to avoid. So I'm going to give you, I think, four or five of the top ingredients you need to learn about. Even if you don't know exactly what they are, even if you don't remember what they are, just be aware of them and look at the labels. You know, get your, oh, so there we go. Look at the label on your can. Look at the label on your bag. And look for these ingredients. And I'm going to tell you why. So the first ingredient, or the first item, <laughs> technical difficulty. Hello, it's being tricky. There, byproducts. Do you know what byproducts are? You've maybe heard about them. Byproducts are usually just found in canned pet foods. We'll talk about the dry stuff later. But byproducts are, hmm, they are parts of meat that we usually, humans don't eat. So that can include hmm, some internal organs that we don't eat, like the lungs. Most of us don't eat lungs or spleens. Um, cow udders, those are byproducts. And also, what else? Oh yeah, let's not forget. Chicken feet, chicken be beaks, those are byproducts. And they all can be in our pet's food. And also, did you know? Because I had forgotten about this. It is, byproducts are put into food that is consumed and sold at like fast food restaurants 
and not all, some, and also in some of the school food. So just be aware that that's kind of what is a byproduct, what's in a byproduct. So the next item, so just to give you just a little, this is like we're not going into big detail here. I'm just going to give you the, the surface the surface stuff, the real kind of, I guess you'd say cliff notes, right? So that's kind of byproducts. It's just anything that isn't meat um, that we humans wouldn't consume and some other things that, well, ooh. Um, so meat and bone meal. We're going to talk about this also at an item later, but meat and bone meal. Keep in mind the word meal. This is really, really important. Meat and bone meal. Uh, mm. So meat and bone meal. Obviously, meal is ground up, right? Flour is a meal. Corn meal, right? But meat and bone meal. So we think, oh, well, that's great. No, go running. It's um, usually ground, it's ground up as I said, and it's often disease-ridden tissue, unwanted animal parts, often containing high levels of hormones, antibiotics, and pesticides. So we're going to talk about meat and bone meal a little bit later. And our next thing to watch for is BHT and BHA. I didn't write out their long words what they what they actually are but they are preservatives and they cause cancer so you don't want to have anything that has those ingredients bht bha um, just be aware and they're used for preservatives also sodium benzoate this is also a preservative it's usually found in well I'm sorry, it's found in a lot of different things. So just read your labels, but it's very highly poisonous to kitty cats. It's also found in human food. And you're like, what? Um, especially fruit juices and like aloe vera juice. Check your label and see sodium benzoate because there's a lot of sodium ingredients. Sodium this, sodium that. But sodium benzoate is the one to look for and the one to just avoid or be aware. You know, I'm... Just be aware of what it is and that it is um, well, what it is. That's that's the most important thing. And then finally, rendered products. We've heard about rendering, right? Do you know what that is? So if you don't know what rendering is, it's just slow cooking. It's like they slow cook in this big. I don't know in factories how big the vats are, but they, they just pour a bunch of stuff, and I'm going to tell you what some of that stuff is, into a vat. They slow cook it down. They cook it down. They cook it down. They cook it down, right? Okay, so what are some of these rendered products? What the heck is that? What does that mean? So there are rendering plants all over the place, but some of them are located close to slaughterhouses, like a chicken slaughterhouse or a beef slaughter, a cow, you know, slaughterhouse. Um, so some of the names, so what the end result of these rendered, slow cooked, highly cooked and highly processed um, ingredients, items, Are, remember we talked about the meal, the bone meal, the beef meal, other things that they can, that these rendered products can be uh, known as, and you can see on ingredients in your, on your labels, include meat meal, chicken meal, meat and bone meal, or byproduct meal, depending on what's in this rendered stuff you know, cook down stuff. But what is in that rendering pot? Well, it can include um, animals that are dead, animals that are dying, diseased, disabled, um, so they didn't get, make it into the slaughterhouse. Um, 
like parts that are not for human consumption, including, and this was an eye opener for me, I'm like really? So you always, I've always wondered what happens to the meat that is past the sell by date if it's not recycled for us to, to sell, right? Uh, to, to, if they don't recycle it to uh, resell it, some places may. Um, Hopefully not. So what is what is what happens to it? What do they do with it? Well, one of the things that happens is it goes to a rendering plant, package and all. So going into that rendered soup or whatever it is, stew, including the wrappers and the packaging, goes in can go into the rendering pot. Right? Wow. Um, so there's, there's, you know, there, you can read and read and read about rendering the process, but also another thing um, that used to happen, it's not as common, but euthanized dogs and cats also went into the rendering pot, and roadkill um, goes into that rendering stew or pot. So what, what's so bad about the euthanized animals? Of course, the drug that euthanizes the animals. So supposedly now that's been cleaned up, but some of the lower end animal food uh, companies still use products from those kinds of rendering plants. Um, but for the most part, um, the dog and cat industry has, I think maybe police that. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I think it's gotten better since we humans have put our foot down. Uh, but you can't, I can't say that and it can't be said about our large animals, horses, cows, sheep. Um, hard to say what's still in their dry, you know, dry food. So any questions, any comments about the, the ingredients that I have right here, oh, here, <laughs> right here, byproducts, meat, and bone meal, which is included in the rendered products, BHT, BHA, sodium benzoate, and of course, rendered products are anything that say meal, bone meal, chicken meal, those are all rendered products that can have who knows what in them. So just to be aware of that. So if you have any questions or any thoughts, because that's a lot, and we could actually go on and on about that topic, you know, all of those ingredients. But I want to just move on. What about good options? And also, before we move on to the good options, I'd just like to remind you, educate yourself. Find ways to you know, there's so much information out there. I started learning about diet and nutrition back in the 90s. There were two magazines that I loved and they changed my life. One was called Tiger Tribe and the other one was called Wolf Clan. Tiger Tribe and Wolf Clan. So Tiger Tribe was for cats and Wolf Clan was for dogs. And it was all holistic. So everybody in there, veterinarians, the writers, the modalities, they were all healthy. And my eyes were opened. It was like, this is that kind of that maggot though. Well, for me, it started with Tiger Tribe. Opened my eyes. Uh, they went out of business uh, as many magazines do, but they were around for a really long time. I think now the closest thing I can find, and I don't have a copy of Animal Wellness, but Animal Wellness Magazine and Equine Wellness Magazine, they have uh, great articles and information that that are a really good place to get a get a start um, for learning about um, you know al alternative healthy healthy alternatives for our animal companions and yeah I'm not sure who this is but great topic thank you so much I'm so glad that that you think it's a good topic because I think it's a really 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 important topic as is diet and nutrition, which is for a different day, but I'm gonna just begin to talk about that a little bit because it's one thing to say, here's all the bad stuff, and I could just walk away and leave you with that, but that, that would be horrible. What can you do? What are the good choices? There's lots and lots of good choices. So first of all, know your ingredients. 
So some good, healthy alternatives. So obviously, dry food, that's the most processed. So the least processed you are, the, le the least cooked, the healthier the actual food is. So as we know, like if you eat a raw apple, it has more nourishment than one that's been cooked. That's still good for you, but the raw right from Mother Nature has the most fresh raw ingredients for you, know, for you to consume to make your body feel good. Therefore, wouldn't the same be true with our animal companions? Yes. And what do animals, so this is really important. What do, think about this. What do animals eat in the wild? Your dog or your cat? Cats eat, you know, mice or birds. They eat the whole thing. Except my father-in-law, who is a veterinarian, would always say when he was playing golf, he would see these little, this little body part. It was, I think, the gizzard of a bird. And he always knew a cat had, you know, eaten a bird. Ate everything, feathers, beak, feet, everything except that little gizzard. I'm not sure why he gave an explanation. Uh, dogs, they eat lots of stuff, not just, you know, living critters, but they'll eat, you know, dogs will eat almost anything, right? But the healthier things that they would eat naturally in the wild, if they were, you know, a wild dog like a wolf or a coyote, what do they eat? Um, similar to dogs and cats. I mean, I'm sorry, dogs and cats. Dogs eat similar to cats, but for cats, just so you know, Cats have to have meat. Dogs can go vegetarian, but probably need a little balance of protein, meat protein, but cats have to have meat. Raw meat, like that mouse or bird, has an ingredient called terrine naturally in it. If cats don't have terrine, so look for that on your cat food, terrine, make sure that's in there. If they don't have that ingredient, They'll, it leads to blindness. Um, so back to the healthy alternatives. So there's more to go. My props have gone. Okay. okay. We have dry food. Not necessarily a healthy alternative. So look at your labels on the dry food and see what's in there. This is supposed to be, oh, there you go, healthy. Right, it says no corn, no wheat, no soy. So you buy this going like, oh, this is really the healthiest thing I could get for my animal companion. The first ingredient is chicken. So there's a lot of real chicken in this. What do these things look like? I don't know if you can see this. Uh, I gotta block my eyes. They're little nuggets, right? The little dried, dusty little nuggets. What the heck is that? Um, the second ingredient, chicken meal. Remember what I said about anything with meal? So chicken meal, it's a, uh, it's, you know, chicken meal has been rendered and it's a, it has byproducts and the byproducts probably came, because it says chicken meal, it probably came from chicken parts that came from a chicken slaughter. So that rendering plant was probably right next to a chicken slaughterhouse, right? Okay, so look at the ingredients because it may say it's really healthy. And there's a lot of really healthy ingredients in here. Uh, pea protein, don't know what that is. So again, what is this stuff? But the more ingredients you have that you can't pronounce, the more you need to go like, what is that? That's probably something, would you eat that? <laughs> so another example is, I have these two bags of kitty treats. So I was going to go to the store and get dog food and dog treats so I could show you guys that, but i sorry, I didn't make it. But you guys know you can look. If you have dogs, you can look on your bags, on your cans. But here's an empty bag of treats. It says they're really healthy. It says they're grain-free. So this must be really good. And look, there's a picture of an egg and a picture of a, looks like a trout to me. What's the first ingredient on here? So these are pretty good ingredients on this little tiny thing. It says ocean white fish. Okay. Second ingredient, chicken meal. And then there's a bunch of other things that dried egg product. What is that exactly? It's not dried eggs. 
So it's a byproduct of whatever that is. So again, that's something you can look up. I'm not going to go into that now, but this looks like it's supposed to be really healthy. It's questionable, but it might be a good alternative. The best alternative I've found for my kitties for something processed or something I buy at a store is freeze-dried, um, freeze-dried, you know, white chicken meat, freeze-dried chicken hearts, freeze-dried some other things, and they have different alternate, but they're freeze-dried, so it's like the real deal, nothing added. Uh, it's just freeze-dried. So you, that's pretty darn safe and healthy, but what happens? It costs money, you know. It's more expensive, a little more expensive, but when you start thinking about the expense for healthier eating, doesn't it pay off in the long run because your health or your animal companion's health is much better so you're not go paying for all those doctor bills or going through whatever those diseases are it's kind of a no-brainer and I'll let you answer that okay so there are lots of foods that are very addictive to our kitties and our dogs this is um one of uh, the many treats <laughs> you can see these little little nuggety things so what do you think is in this ingredients the very first ingredient, chicken byproduct. Okay, right away, you know this is like no. But you, you, you choose your battles, right? If you choose to, my kitties, they get these once in a while, every once in a while, because they love them. I haven't completely been able to wean them off of this, but I know what I'm giving them. Um, and yeah, I feel guilty. Ground corn, animal fat, brewer's rice, meat byproducts that's another ingredient so you keep going down the list and then there's all those words that you don't know what they mean they're all greek to me or latin or something uh you have to question what the heck is that so this is basically a bag of chemicals and bad stuff that um has been flavored to taste so good that they want more and they can't stop how good is that kind of like some other other foods we humans are addicted to that we know better but we make a choice and, and it's like okay well I can't stop eating that but the same thing with this stuff okay now I had a teacher well before I go on do you have any any questions or any thoughts um, anything that you would like to um, ask because this is a really important topic. There's lots of questions that you might have. And just in case uh, you're watching the replay or you don't want to put anything in the comments, you can, you can message me privately. I'd be happy to talk about this and also point you in a direction uh, to help. But hopefully by the end of this, you're going to have some really good information about uh, what your alternatives are, what you can do. Um, so... The most processed food is dried, and the next best is canned. And as if uh, what's found in most like grocery stores or like your, I don't want to name names, but you know the stores I'm talking about. They sell the lower priced items, so they and they have pet food aisles, um, and they may even have their own brand. Go look at the go look at the label, please. If you're, you're buying them, just read the label so you know what you're feeding your animal companions. So the next, you know, anything that's cooked is processed. But, so look on your cans. And there are very healthy alternatives now. So just look at the labels. But there are, some of you guys know, there's health food stores for animals. <laughs> the pet food animal health food store right and they carry lines of things of items that are healthy so this is something that has been around for a long time in our I'm not I'm not promoting any brand I promise I and I'm not getting paid for anything but the ingredients in this called core grain free right and it's uh, beef venison and lamb first ingredients beef beef broth beef liver lamb liver venison there are no byproducts there are no um Funny, there's some vitamins and there's a couple of words I don't understand, but for the most part, the ingredients in this particular item should be pretty pretty good um, for your animal companions. Here's another one. 
This is chicken stew for kitties. Whoops, there, I have to get out of the way. But, and its first ingredient is chicken. Chicken broth, potato starch, calcium lactate, chicken fat, yada, 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 vitamin B12, all kinds of, and it has terrain. Both of these have terrain. And I think most kitty foods should have that. But notice the difference between that junk food, kitty treats, and what's in here. And you'll notice ingredients that were the same as in the junk food kitty treats in a lot of canned and dried kitty food. Okay, so what's, what's a step above this? Lightly cooked food. So why, uh, why isn't that the, that's not the best. Why is that not the best? Lightly cooked, anything cooked, you just, you take ingredients out of the raw, whatever that was. But some people can't handle raw, which is where we're going next. Um, they can just, they need to lightly cook their food. And so you, you need, if you wanna do that, there are, you can buy already lightly cooked food. Um, and in even some of the um, health food stores, um, animal health food stores too, uh, and like the Whole Foods kinds of stores, you can find, they even have freezer compartments where there's healthy, healthy things, um, items, healthier items. Just look at the ingredients though. Always look at the ingredients. So lightly cooked, you can do it yourself, but please learn the formula for all of the ingredients that you need to make sure it's balanced. You don't want to just cook up a bunch of meat and give it to them, whether it's your dog or your cat. Your dog's needs are different from your cat's needs. So find someone, you know, I uh, I have a couple of, oh, this is where a couple of these books that I, I brought. See, show and tell, I told you. This one is, uh, I think they've updated the, um, the formulas. But this, Raining Cats and Dogs, was one of the first books, one of the first books I got about healthy pet food nutrition. This was just a really cute book. Um, oops. But it had cartoons. Uh, I'm in the way. Um, but this taught me all the ingredients to use in a preparing home-cooked food and a lot of tons of recipes, but they were balanced. And so I, this was, uh, that one book was one of my first books. Um, the book that got me because... I'm a kitty person, is, oh, can you see that one? The Natural Cat by Anitra Frazier. This is like the kitty cat Bible. It has everything holistic and also not holistic. So in this book, I learned what I just shared with you, some of the bad ingredients, but I also learned the alternatives for healthy. So if you wanna do the best for your animal, here's what you can do. And I learned in this book and then her teacher, Dr. Richard Pitcairn. This is one of his books, Natural Health for Dogs and Cats. And in this book are also recipes and um, kind of a guidance for what to, if you're gonna home cook your animal's food, what ingredients to put in, you know, what you need to have and, and some ideas, great ideas. So there's that's another source. Um, and there's other sources um, that I can share with you. But now, the final thing I want to talk about is raw food. And you might go like, oh my gosh. I thought that because it's like we humans um, are highly affected by salmonella, salmonella poisoning, right? But cats, I'm not sure about dogs. I'm pretty sure the same with dogs. Their bodies and their, their physical anatomy is different from ours and they process things different and they don't, it doesn't affect them. But of course you don't want to feed them anything that's contaminated, right? So if you're feeding raw, which I did back for many, many years, I, I, it was a long process, but I did do raw, um, organic chicken breast, and then I added different ingredients. I ground it up in a food process or yada, yada. I won't go into all that because this isn't about cooking. Um, but I was really scared at first. But what I saw, the end result is what is so amazing. They, Sammy and Katie, that they were my first ones that I tried this with. They had dandruff. The dandruff went away. They had oily skin. It went away. There were uh, some ear, black gunk in, in Sammy's ears went away when I changed the diet. So, so many things are diet related. So I highly recommend you learning about 
the diet. Now, nowadays, back then, it was the 90s, early 2000s, you couldn't get raw food or lightly cooked food or healthy food for your animals. You had to fix it yourself. But now you can get lightly cooked food from good. You need to know your source. Always know your source. And where is, if there's meat in it, where is that coming from? You need to know as best as you can the source. So there's a company that my veterinarians and some other people highly recommended. So what I feed my kitties raw, they get a combination of, I don't have their canned food, but they get um, some healthy canned food and then they every day and they also get raw food. So there's a company, oops, sorry. There's an amazing company. Again, I'm not getting paid for any of this. It's just I want to share with you what works what over the years, and this has been over 20 years, uh, 25 years of uh, learning and, and using. There's this company called Darwin's. For dogs and cats, they package raw food. So this is chicken, and it comes in these little frozen thingies. You just rip them apart. So this is a, you know, and whoops. <laughs> Wait a minute. So this is a package. And what you do is you, you just rip one off out of the freezer and they send it to you and it's freeze dried. I mean, they're, this, this is like an amazing company and all of my holistic vets highly recommend this company. There's other companies out there too that do similar, but their background, their sources, um, and I mean, these guys are amazing. So this is really easy, convenient. It's all in the package. So you, you take, I take this out of the freezer, I put it in the refrigerator, I let it thaw, and then, you know, this lasts a, a, a couple of days for my kitties. And then as this one is getting low, I just bring another one out of the freezer. Um, so it's, it's really, really easy peasy. Um, so there's lots of companies out there. If you have a holistic veterinarian, um, you know, ask them what they recommend. If you have a um, non-holistic veterinarian, um, just be careful of what they say because I don't. I am not negating any veterinarian. Please let. Please know that. But I want to share an experience with you before we go. Oh, I forgot to say one more thing. One of the healthiest things you can do for dogs raw bones. You need to get not cooked. Cooked bones, splinter raw bones do not. Think about it. What are they eating? Eating in the wild. You know, the raw bone, raw, raw everything, right? They eat the whole cat, bird, not a cat, I'm sorry. The, the bird, the mouse, um, whatever it is that they, they get in the wild. They eat the whole thing, including the bones, and they're raw. The raw bones don't splinter. So to give, and you can do, do a little research about what kind of bones are the best. So chicken bones, be careful of still, they're little, but chicken necks, whole chicken necks, even for a kitty, that's really amazing, really good, really, really healthy, especially if they're organic. Okay, so that's that. Um, and finally, I wanted to share with you, I started talking about veterinarians. I love veterinarians. I wanted to be one. I wanted to go to vet school, but I didn't know. Do you know? In vet school, at least before now, up to a few years ago, I, things may have changed, but diet and nutrition, they got like about a day of education. That's it. And then they have like the science diet or the Hills diet. By the way, read those ingredients. They're not what, just read the ingredients. That's all I'm going to say. You'll see what's in there. Bone, you know, bone meal, chicken meal, whatever. Certain, just byproducts. Uh, just, just check it out for yourself. Find out for yourself. But they don't get the education that they need to be to to advise us on nutrition. So, what happened to me? This was an eye opener. We had a kitty, a torty kitty named Katie, and she was. Something was wrong with her, and I can't even remember right now. But we took her to the emergency center, which, you know, it, it was pretty serious if I took her there. So she went to internal medicine, and that veterinarian came in and started asking me the usual questions. What do you feed them? So I decided to tell the truth. And I said I fed raw. 
And she started yelling at me. Do you know what you're doing? You're killing your cat. I just was like horrified. I'll do anything for my babies. What do you mean I'm killing my kitty? And I started crying and I was like, I, I've, you know, I've destroyed my kitty. I'm like, what? And then, then they said, I mean, this was crazy though. The internist took Katie to an eye doctor, an ophthalmologist, and then she was being taken from place to place to place. And I was devastated. I'm, I'm killing my, my kitty. And luckily at the same place was my veterinarian who was at the time um, the head of the holistic department. So I go over to his receptionist and I'm like in tears and like, what have I done? And, she, and then my veterinarian comes out and he said, how much education have you had about nutrition? And I was like, oh, yeah, because he knew uh, all the, the things that I'd been doing and studying back then. He says, you know, you have many more years than they, than any of the allopathic veterinarians, Western medicine veterinarians get. You, what do you know about what I've been feeding them? And I was like, oh, yeah, I do know what I know. So I was calmed down and he went and talked to that veterinarian in his kind and gentle way, non-accusing, but basically told me that he told them, if I ever hear of you saying anything like that to a client ever again. <laughs> and so um, just be aware. I'm not saying that to, I'm just saying that we need to empower ourselves. There are babies, right? So we are the ones, the buck stops with us, right? Um, so learn about the ingredients that are in the food. Be aware of the ingredients, right? Take charge. And if you decide you're going to feed this food anyway, and it has byproducts, and it has, um, you know, the BHTs, and it has bone meal and whatever, that's fine. You're doing the best you can. At least you're making a decision that you know. Like if I choose to eat junk food, if I choose to go to, say, McDonald's or someplace like that, and I know the food's not the best food that I could be eating and putting in my body, but I choose to do so anyhow, that's on me, but at least I know what I'm eating. The same thing with our animals. I think we need to be educated. I think we need to know what we're dealing with, and then we can make a decision. So if you choose to only feed healthy food, that's great. If you choose to like, I don't want to do that. And you choose to feed that's whatever that has all of the bad ingredients in it. Great. Just so long as you know what it is. And just so you feel good inside of yourself at what decision, whatever decision you're making. And remember, you do the best that you can in the moment. Because I used to beat myself up. It's like, God, I wish I should have my poor kitties or dogs in the past. But weren't you doing the best that you could at that time? I know I was. I didn't know any better. So you educate yourself as best as you can. You do the best you can. And you have fun with your animal companions. You have fun at mealtime, no matter what it is that, whether you're choosing to give them... Like sometimes this is known as kitty crack. Well, actually, uh, Fancy Feast is known as kitty crack. It's very addictive and got all kinds of bad stuff in it. Okay, nothing, but whatever. If you feed it, whatever, it's okay. Or if you're feeding like the healthiest whatever that, that is on the planet. We do the best we can. Um, and so that's, that's what you do. Do the best you can. Have fun. Love your animal companion. And please share with me whatever it is that you are feeding. And maybe you can educate me and share with me something that um, I don't know about. So I would love to hear um, about anything that you have, uh, that you're doing with your animal companion. And maybe you can educate not just me, but the whole group. And, uh, oh, thanks. That's so sweet. Thanks so much. You're wonderful too. Um, so yeah, yeah. So any questions or any thoughts, please let me know. And um, next week, we're going to have a guest. The week after, we're going to have a guest. They're amazing. You're not going to want to miss them. You've got to come back to the cafe. I am not telling you now. But 
you're going to be like, oh my gosh, this is so fun. Um, so have the best day, have the best week, always have fun with your animal companions. Come back to the cafe often. I will see you guys. Thanks for being here. Take care. See you soon. <laughs> I don't know how to say goodbye. Oh, <laughs> bye everybody. Have the best day with your animal companions and I will see you at the cafe.